In this module, we shall talk about the randomized play the winner rule. In the past few modules, we have introduced the concept of a clinical trial and seen that the basic design of a double-blinded placebo-controlled trial is considered to be the gold standard of study design. However, in the preceding module, we have introduced the play the winner rule and the modified play the winner rule. This was done on considerations of ethics. That is, that if as a trial progresses sequentially, we at some point before the conclusion of the trial get conclusive evidence that one treatment is definitely superior to another, then it should be possible to adapt our treatment allocation so that more patients are allocated to the treatment believed to be superior. One means of doing this is to use the play the winner rule due to Zellen or the modified play the winner rule. However, these two rules have some drawbacks and in this module we shall introduce the randomized play the winner rule which can be used in cases when there is delayed response. We shall derive some properties of the randomized play the winner rule and study its properties with respect to treatment allocation and selection bias. Learning objectives for this module. We shall first define the controlled clinical trial. Next, we shall see that there are some ethical considerations which imply that the standard design of the controlled clinical trial can be improved upon in terms of ethical requirements. We shall revisit the PWR and the MPWR which we introduced in our previous module. We shall see that these have some drawbacks and hence as a remedy, we shall finally introduce the randomized PWR rule. In this module, we shall study the randomized play the winner rule. This is in some sense an improvement over the play the winner rule and the modified play the winner rule, which we considered in the previous module and our discussion in this module will be based upon the paper by Way and Durham, which appeared in JASA in 1978. For further details of the procedure, you are referred to the paper, the details of which have been given on this slide. To give you some background, our concern in a clinical trial is treatment efficacy. That is, we have a standard treatment and a new treatment and we wish to make a statement about the efficacy of the new treatment with respect to the standard. You are familiar that the standard design for a clinical trial is the double-blinded, placebo-controlled, randomized trial. This has been presented in the epidemiological literature as the gold standard of study design. However, in addition to treatment efficacy, an additional consideration which arises due to the fact that the trial relates to humans is the ethics of allocation. So, specifically, we are concerned with the situation where we have a trial which is progressing sequentially in time and at some point before trial completion, before stipulated trial completion, we have a situation where one treatment has emerged as markedly superior to the others. It is thus ethical to ensure that more treatments are allocated to the arm which appears to be superior. However, note that the word convincing is presented in quotes 
and this refers to the fact that as the trial has not been completed, we have not yet achieved the desired power. In this paper, we considers a scientific means of balancing the two goals of treatment efficacy and ethics. An additional ethical issue which arises in clinical trials over and above the usual goal of determining treatment efficacy is to avoid allocation of the less beneficial treatment as far as is possible. This is a goal which has been studied in the literature and I have given you some details of this in the previous module. So some of the related references are Armitage 1960, Anscombe 1963, Cotton, Cornfield, Greenhouse and Halperin and finally the paper by Zellen in 1969 which introduced the play the winner or PWR and modified play the winner or MPWR rules. We have discussed the two rules of Zellen in detail in the previous module. In the previous module and in this, I will make some simplifying assumptions. Firstly, that there are two treatments, 0 and 1. The patients enter the trial sequentially. The outcome is binary, that is, either a success or a failure, and that there are no other covariates which influence success probability. The play the winner rule then proceeds in this sense. A success on a particular treatment generates a future trial on the same treatment with a new patient. A failure on a treatment generates a future trial on the alternative treatment. So if we define the two treatments as A and B, we can have an earned model for the play the winner rule, which says that if we have success on a treatment A, then we add a single ball marked A to our urn, and if we have failure, we add a single ball marked B to the urn. Similarly for the case when the current trial is on treatment B. Zellen also presents a modification of the PWR termed the modified PWR or the MPWR. This is applicable to the case when the result of the treatment is known immediately. So consider a case where we have treatment 0 and treatment 1. The first patient is allocated to treatment 0 and in this case we observe a success and hence we also allocate the second treatment, the second patient to treatment 0. This is also a success and hence we allocate the third patient to treatment 0. However, for the third patient we observe a failure and at this point we switch to treatment 1 and observe S and F. Note that the moment we observe an F on either of the treatments, we make a switch in treatment allocation. The modified PWR can be seen to be desirable in the sense that if we define N1 as the number of tr patients on treatment 1 and N0 as the number of patients on treatment 0, then the expectation of N0 to the expectation of N1 is equal to Q1 by Q0, where Q1 and Q0 are the corresponding probabilities of failure for the treatments. And hence, in this sense, the modified PWR allocates more patients to the better treatment. 
the PWR and the NPWR both have certain drawbacks. In the case of the PWR, the treatment allocation often tends to equal assignment. This is because we often have a situation where the urn is empty as balls are drawn without replacement and hence at this point as per the recommendation of Zellen, treatment allocation is made by tossing a fair coin. In case of the MPWR, we are assuming that the result is available immediately and thus the MPWR is not applicable for situations where there is delayed response. We shall also see that the MPWR is prone to a kind of epidemiological bias called selection bias, in which case the physician making the treatment allocation is able to influence the allocation based upon his own convictions about treatment success. We thus introduce the RPWR or the randomized PWR. So here we have an urn with U balls of two types, which we call A and B. Treatment allocation is by drawing a ball with replacement. In the case we have a success on treatment I, we add beta balls of type I and alpha balls of type J to the urn. In case we have a failure on treatment I, we add alpha balls of type I and beta balls of type J to the urn. If at any stage the urn is empty, we toss a fair coin to assign the treatment. Here I takes values A and B and beta is greater than equal to alpha. This is the definition of RPW U alpha B. It is interesting to note the differences between RPW001 and PWR. Note that RPW001 means that u is equal to 0, that is we have no initial balls in the urn, beta is equal to 0. Note that RPW001 means that u is equal to 0, that is there are no initial balls in the urn, alpha is equal to 0, that is we do not add any balls of the type corresponding to failure and beta is equal to 1, that is we add a single ball corresponding to the treatment on which we observe success. The main difference between RPW001 and PWR is that for RPWR sampling occurs with replacement whereas for PWR sampling occurs without replacement. If we can define random variables RAN and RBN as the number of balls of type A and B after N outcomes and if we define SNA and FNA as the corresponding number of successes and failures with treatment I after N assignments, then we have the recursive relationships RAN is U plus beta times SAN plus FBN plus alpha times SBN plus FAN and similarly for RBN. The random variables RAN form a stochastic process with transition probabilities given by probability of RAN plus 1 equal to RAN plus beta RAN equal to PA into RAN plus QB into RBN by TN and probability of RAN plus 1 equal to RAN plus alpha times 
plus alpha given R A n is Q A R A n plus P B R B n divided by T n. Here P A and P B are the success probabilities on each of the treatments. Q is equal to 1 minus P and T n is equal to R A n plus R B n equal to 2u plus alpha plus beta times n, the total number of balls after the n allocations. Using these relations, we have the following recursive relations for the expectations of R a n and R a n squared. If we further define n a n, as the number of patients assigned to treatment A after N assignments, then we have expectation of NAN equal to expectation of RAN minus U minus N times beta QB plus alpha PB by PA minus QB into beta minus alpha. Assuming that PA is not equal to QB and beta is not equal to alpha. If we assume without loss of generality that P A is greater than or equal to P B, it is possible to so show that limit n tending to infinity expectation of N A N divided by N is equal to alpha P B plus beta Q B by alpha into P A plus P B plus beta into Q A plus Q B. So, note that this is increasing in beta by alpha and tends to Q B by Q A plus Q B as the ratio beta by alpha tends to infinity. Thus, if beta is large with respect to alpha, the trial forces more patients on the better treatment. However, if beta by alpha is too large, then it is possible to show that RPW U alpha beta can tend to become rather deterministic and leads to a kind of bias called selection bias. To this end, note that the probability of a correct guess at the nth stage, assuming that the user has a guessing strategy for RPW U alpha beta. So, as he guesses treatment A, if there are currently more balls of type A, and treatment B, if there are currently more balls of type B. In this case, it is possible to show that the probability of a correct guess of treatment assignment at stage n plus 1 is given by half of plus expectation d n by 2 t. It is possible to show that the probability of a correct guess at the n plus 1 at stage is equal to half plus expectation mod of d n by twice t n, where d n is equal to r a n minus r b n. By an application of the dominated convergence theorem, it is possible to show that the probability of a correct guess is half plus beta minus alpha into P A minus P B by twice alpha P A plus P B plus twice beta Q A plus Q B in the limit. This is increasing in beta minus in the ratio beta by alpha. Thus, the RPWR introduces more randomization when beta by alpha is small, but it will tend to put more patients on the better treatment when beta by alpha is large. An alternative rule which is often used is an inverse stopping rule. This takes the number of successes and failures into account and we continue the trial until either SAN plus FBN or 
S B n plus F A n is equal to some constant predetermined value R. So, if S A n plus F B n is equal to R, the trial is terminated and treatment A is selected as the better treatment. It is possible to show that the probability of a correct selection is given by the probability of R A of 2 R minus 1 greater than or equal to R and using the relationships presented on the earlier slides, it follows that the probability of correct selection tends to 1 as R tends to infinity. A natural measure of the selection bias of a sequential assignment rule is the expected number of correct guesses and we can see that this will tend to 1 for the case where we have an RPW 001. In this module, we have introduced the randomized play the winner rule. In the immediately preceding module, we had introduced the play the winner rule due to Zellen and the modified play the winner rule. However, both these rules have some disadvantages. In case of the play the winner rule, in many situations, we see that there are no balls left in the urn at the time a new patient comes and thus it is necessary to allocate treatments by tossing a fair coin. This means that there is a tendency of the play the winner rule to allocate the patients equally to both treatments irrespective of the success probabilities. The modified play the winner rule too does not allow for delayed response and it is possible to show that the modified play the winner rule is suspect to selection bias. In this module we have introduced the randomized play the winner rule which can be used in situations where there is delayed response. We have studied the properties of this rule and seen how it performs in terms of selection bias as compared to the NPWR.